is, folks. Movie fans may think that Charles Boyer has dash, and Walter Pidgeon has dash. But we think William Bendix is right up there with him. I'll go further. I've got three times as much dash as Boyer or Pidgeon. Yesterday, my new picture was previewed, and my boss, Darrell Zanuck, said, How did that dash, dash, dash Bendix get on this lot? <laughs> the American Meat Institute presents William Bendix in the Life of Riley. The meat people of America, providing a great food for a great nation. Five million farmers and ranchers raising fine meat animals. 600,000 men and women in more than 3,500 meat packing plants. 400,000 meat retailers, all doing their level best in face of the enormous demands of war to put meat on your table. On behalf of all these, the American Meat Institute brings you The Life of Riley. Chester A. Riley is an ambitious man. That's why, besides working in the Los Angeles aircraft plant six days a week, he also goes to night school three nights a week and still finds enough spare time to gum up the private affairs of his friends and family at regular intervals. For example... Oh, thanks, just the same, Pop, but I can write my homework in pencil. No, no, you better use my fountain pen, Junior. It looks more neater to the teacher. Oh, it don't matter to Miss Jessup, Pop. She said so. Junior, I know that Miss Jessup... Don't forget, she's also my teacher in night school. Go on, you use the peg. Oh, okay. Well, say, Pop, uh, how are you getting along at night school? Oh, great. Confidentially, I think teacher is falling in love with me. Ah, <laughs> oh, go on, yeah, no Pop. Kidding. <laughs> Yesterday in class, she said to me, she said, Mr. Riley, I want you to sit in the front row from now on because I can keep my eye on you. <laughs> Say, Papa, hmm? this fountain pen's no good. Every time you try to fill it, it squirts the ink out again. Well, you can fix it, can't you, Junior? I wish you'd try and take after me. I got a mechanical head. <laughs> Here, give me that pen. Oh, look out. You'll get ink all over the place. Now, don't worry. I'm doing this. Now, first, I dip the pen in the ink. Here, I'll show you how. Watch. Then I lift the lever... Now, I take the pen out of the ink bottle before I push the lever back into place. Now, I got ink in the pen. Simple? Yeah. But now you can't write with a pen on account of that lever sticking out of it like that. Okay, okay. But all I got to do now is push the lever like this. Oh, gosh, Pop, all over the wallpaper. Uh, Junior, I wish you wouldn't always be asking me to do things for you. Well, I didn't ask you. Oh, gee, Mom's going to be mad. Now, 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 Junior, let's keep this just between us. How are we going to keep ink on that wall a secret? I should have used invisible ink. Pop, I oh, hear Mom coming. Oh, oh, well, well, I'll stand in front of that wall and you stand alongside of me. Come over here. Now, oh, okay. Now, we make out like we're just talking here. Well, uh, you see, Junior? Well, Annie, you'll be late for night school. Oh, uh, hello, Dumplin. Well, what are you two lined up with your backs against that wall for? Well, uh, we, uh, well, we're, we're, we're acting out a story. That's it. It's a spy story where the spy is lined up against the wall to be shot. And well, what are you talking about? Well, you know, the, 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 the story of Matta Harry. I'm Matta and Junior's Harry. <laughs> Riley, what? there's ink on your hands. Where? Uh, oh, oh, no, no, that's just a large blue vein I got. <laughs> Riley, do I have to drag you away from that wall? <laughs> you took on me. <gasps> Chester Riley, look at that wall. I've seen it. <laughs> oh, ink all over it. Just for this, Junior, you can't play basketball for a week. Oh, Mom, I never done it. I mean... Junior? Right. <laughs> So it was you. Junior, you and me ain't speaking. <laughs> if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a squealer. Oh, Papa, I now, just don't be silly. Bob, Riley. where I come from in Brooklyn, we don't squeal. <laughs> if you do, you become an outlaw. And that's almost as bad as an in law. <laughs> Old 
pal, Waldo Binio, set for night school. How are you, Waldo? Oh, my aching back. <laughs> well, uh, Waldo, what's aching it tonight? The usual thing. Had another fight with my wife. Well, what happened? Well, you know, she's always telling me to shut up. Yeah. I just couldn't stand it anymore, so I told her if she said shut up once more, I'd do something drastic. Well, what did she say? Shut up. <laughs> well, what did you do? I rolled up my sleeves, made a fist, and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, do I bet you're tickled pink whenever you can get away from your wife, huh? Oh, yes, why, well, she's the reason I go to night school. Uh, confidentially, I'm a college graduate. You are? Yeah. Oh, well... <laughs> Then I guess you ain't worried about passing that English exam tonight, huh? Oh, no. Uh, well, neither am I, but, but I am worried about Luigi passing. Luigi Marcellucci, the fruit peddler? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've been helping Luigi with his English, but he don't never seem to get no more improved. <laughs> <laughs> even with me learning them. I, I, uh, excuse me, I mean even with I learning them. <laughs> Well, if he doesn't pass, he doesn't pass. Oh, but he's got to pass. He's got to. It's, it's very important. Why? Well, I, I can't tell you, Waldo. I promised Luigi I wouldn't tell. And with me, mumps is the word. <laughs> well, we'd better get into school now, Mr. Riley. Uh, there's Miss Jessup walking up and down past the window like a wild beast waiting for her prey. Oh, I bet this exam will be a scorcher. Oh, don't faze me none. If you get stuck on a question, look over at me, Waldo. <laughs> May not be the right answer, but it'll be close. <laughs> well, I won't have any trouble. And uh, besides, Miss Jessup said if she caught anybody cheating, she'd mark them zero and maybe expel them. Yeah? Oh, I got to tell Luigi that. If he ever got expelled right now, it would kill him. Well, why? He could still run his fruit stand without a diploma. Yeah, well, yeah, but that ain't it. Luigi's just got to finish school. Hey, Mr. Rice! Oh, here's Luigi coming now. I guess he was waiting for you. Waldo, well, you leave Luigi and me alone. See, I, I got to give him a pep talk. All right, Mr. Riley. I'll see you in class. Yeah. Hello, Luigi. Goodbye, Waldo. Hello, Waldo. Yes, goodbye, Riley. Hello, Luigi. Goodbye, Mr. Riley. No, no. I mean... Uh, <laughs> hello, Waldo. Well, goodbye, Luigi. Uh, goodbye, Luigi. No, I mean hello, Riley. No, that's me. Uh, you better start over with just the two of you. Yeah. Look, Luigi, how are you feeling about that English test tonight? Huh? Mr. Riley, I got just one trouble with the English. I'm a no can speak. <laughs> well, listen, Luigi, you know you got to pass this test, don't you? I know, I know, but this grammar book is a craze. You understand everything what is in these book? Well, sure. What part don't you get so good? We'll open the book at that part, and I'll tell you what it means. Open any part, I'm a no understand all over the whole of the book. <laughs> Well, let's see here now. We can... Uh... Oh, well, here's a question here. It says, what is the difference between a noun and a pronoun? Man and Jimmy. <laughs> if the fellow who's a writer of the book, he don't know, how should I know? <laughs> well, now, 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 wait a minute, Luigi. Let me explain it to you. A noun is a... A noun is a thing, uh. see? Like, for instance, in your store you sell fruit. Well, a grapefruit, that, that's a noun. Oh, I catch. A grapefruit, she's a noun. Yeah, and a, and a pronoun is, uh, well, well, I is a pronoun. Uh-huh, I is a pronoun. Right. Now, now you use a noun and a pronoun in a sentence. Oh, sure, sir. Every morning for breakfast when I'm a stick of my spoon in my noun, he's a squirt to me in my pronoun. <laughs> Hey, Luigi, hurry up and finish the test. Miss Jessup's got her eye on the clock. Five o'clock, students. One minute to get the papers together and hand them in. Oh, the words in this book, he's all a craze. I think I go nuts, Luigi. Where did you get that grammar book? Hide it quick. What's the matter? Miss Jessup will funk you if she catches you cheating with a book. No whispering in class? No, oh, she sees us. She's coming down the aisle. He's a wrong with the book. I'm going to just check up at that. Read that book. <laughs> Mr. Riley? The... Uh, uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Jessup, ma'am. What are you holding behind your back, Mr. Riley? My hands, teacher. <laughs> and what's in your hands, Mr. Riley? Oh, nothing, teacher. See, 
empty. Hey, look out at the book. She's a slip out of your belt. Oh. Eh? Mm-hmm. An English grammar. So, you've been cheating, Mr. Riley. Oh, please, Mr. Teacher, Riley, she's you not cheating. You keep on it, Mr. Luigi. Yes, oh. Luigi. It's very noble of you to speak for Riley. But please, don't interfere. Mr. Riley, I will see you after school. <laughs> Mr. Benny, what are you listening at the door of Mrs. Jessup's classroom for? Junior, I've got some bad news for you. Your your father was kept after school. There. No kidding. Well, let me get my ear to the door, too. I'm very, very sorry, Mr. Riley, but you don't deserve the privilege of attending a publicly supported night school. You were caught red-handed, cheating. You refused to deny that you brought this book to class. So you are hereby expelled from this school. Expelled? No, you can't do that. I, I got two kids. They'll, they'll laugh me out of the house. You should have thought of that before. But, Miss Jessup, what will I tell my family? Couldn't you give me some other punishment? I'll do anything. I'll, I'll mow your lawn for you. I'm sorry, but a pupil who cheats is a bad example to honest pupils. Like Luigi Marcellucci, for instance, who tried to defend you. I'm sorry, Mr. Riley, but you've left me no choice. You're expelled. Okay. That's the way you feel. I resign. (laughs) I can get an education without your school. I can go to the library. It's got more books than your school, and and it's more quiet than your school, and the worst that can happen to a guy is he gets fined two cents. (laughs) Goodbye, Miss Jessup. Uh, Sam, uh, Mr. Riley. Oh. Uh, oh. Hello, Waldo. Oh, Pop. Junior. W- what are you doing here? Well, I... I was just waiting until Miss Jessup let you out. Mm, let who out? I... I come out as soon as I got ready to. I was only staying to tell her a couple of things. You told her, Pop? Yeah. Yeah, I kept dignified and all, but... I told her flat that there had to be some changes made in school or I'd quit. And what did she say, Mr. Riley? Never mind, but I bet this school will miss me when I'm gone. (laughs) Pop, we heard through the door. Oh. You did? Yeah, Pop. But I don't believe that you cheated, and I'm going to tell Miss Jessup so. Now, Junior, Miss Jessup knows best. If she says I cheated, I cheated. Oh, gosh, Pop. Well, what's Mom going to say about you being... Expelled. We just ain't gonna tell her. I'll I'll have to pretend I'm still going and I'll have to find some place to hide on school nights. Gosh. Expelled. My own father expelled. Junior, will you please stop using that word? <laughs> if you must talk about it, let's just say I was graduated suddenly against my will. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll follow the further adventures of Riley's night school days. Meanwhile, this is Ken Niles speaking for meat. These days, when you meal planners go into your meat stores and find that those meat cuts you want just plum aren't there, you want to know why. Well, here are some of the answers. Current government meat needs are the highest in history, needed to keep meat flowing in one continuous stream to all theaters of war, to feed the greatest military forces in history. These enormous government requirements must come from the reduced number of meat animals that are coming to the market, making it difficult for your meat industry to supply the wants of the home front, too. But we have the joy of knowing that our armed forces are getting meat regularly. Now, you may ask, what will the meat situation here at home be during the months ahead? Well, it looks like there will be even less meat, less in quantity and less variety of cuts to choose from. Our recommendation to you as meal planners is this. Plan your meals after you get to the store and see what meats are there at the time. Remember, in peace or war, in days of scarcity or days of plenty, meat is a yardstick of protein foods because meat measures up to every protein need. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, several days have passed since Riley was expelled from night school for cheating in an English exam. Actually, he is innocent, but he is shielding his friend, Luigi Marcellucci, 
for some mysterious reason that so far Riley has refused to divulge. Well, that's funny. What, Mom? Well, look what I found under the couch. Your father's school books. Or maybe they're mine. No, no, they're your father's. I can tell by the writing in them. Even you can spell better than this. <laughs> Besides, look what else I found. Three apples. The apples I give him each night to give to his teacher. Oh, maybe he's saving them up to give her a basket full. Father can't fool me. And then he comes home with chalk in his pocket and expects me to believe he's been in night school. Well, they use chalk at school, Mom. Not the blue chalk they rub on pool cues. <laughs> if you ask me, he hasn't been near that school all this week. Here he is now. Hiya, Peg. Can I have something to eat? School made me hungry. <laughs> yes. Have an apple? Uh, apple? Oh, thanks. <laughs> nice apples, Peg. Mm, aren't they, though? Mm. Junior, I want to talk to your father alone. Well, okay. Pop, if you need me, holler. <laughs> Uh, anything wrong, Dumplin'? Oh, no, no, but I hardly see you anymore. You spend so much time at school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very exhausting, yeah. Study, study, study. I must have twice as much brains as I had last year. <laughs> oh, you poor man. Never any time even for a movie. Well, my education comes first. Oh, movies are educational, too. No, don't be silly, Peg. What could I learn from Lana Turner? <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture I wish we could see at the Bijou. Love me forever. Oh, I couldn't sit through that again. I, I mean, uh, uh, what did you say? Riley, when did you see Love Me Forever? Right. I, I guess it was it was last night. I, I dropped in for a minute. That picture only opened tonight, Riley. And you were supposed to be in night school tonight. Well, I, uh... The, uh, uh, this is a good apple, Dumper. I found those apples along with your school books under the couch. Oh. I, uh, I must have left my books there when I was studying. You study under the couch? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's darker there, but it's quiet. Riley, you might as well give up. I know you haven't been going to night school. Why? Gee, Dumplin', you sound just like a truant officer. <laughs> Riley, why haven't you been going to school? It, it is not kind of another woman, is it? Well, yes, it is. <gasps> what? Who is she? My teacher. <laughs> what? Uh, on account of her, I uh, left school. You left? I uh, quit. Quit? Well, uh, expelled. <laughs> What happened? Well, we, we, we had an English test, see, and she accused me of cheating in the exam. Oh, whatever gave her that idea? I think it was finding the English book. Where did she find it? In my hand. <laughs> Behind my back. So right away she accuses me of cheating without an ounce of evidence, mind you. Oh, oh Riley, you mean you were really cheating? Anybody wants to think I'm a cheater, let him. Oh, now don't try to brazen it out, Riley. The idea expelled. Well, I can take it. You can take it. Well, what about the children? Do you want people pointing at Junior in school and saying his father got expelled for cheating? Well... And how about me? I'll have to cross the street every time I see somebody from your class at night school. Oh. What now? I'll have to change markets. I can't go in and buy fruit from that nice... Honest Luigi Marcellucci. <laughs> he knows, too. I'll say he knows. Listen, if you want to know something... Well, what, Riley? You can tell me. Nothing. I ain't no squealer. Oh, hello, Pop. Where were you tonight? I saw Love Me Forever again. Where's your mother? In the parlor with Miss Jessup. Miss Jessup? What is that troublemaker doing here? I don't know. You better go in and see. Okay, but I ain't taking no more of her ballers out. This ain't school. I'm running things here. Good, good evening, Miss Jessup. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Riley. 
A most unexpected thing has caused me to undergo a change of mind regarding your property and to conclude that you're a man of unsurpassed integrity. Ain't you insulted me enough? (laughs) (laughs) Miss Jessup's paying you a compliment. Oh, is she? Yes, perhaps you'd better read this composition. It was handed in to me tonight in class. It was written by Luigi Marsalucci. The subject is friendship. Read it aloud, Riley. All right. Uh Friendship. Once upon a time, there was one man, she's named Ijilu Lassamucci. An obvious pseudonym. No, no, it isn't. It's his own name, backwards. Go on, meet Riley. And this man had one fine friend by the name Rester Chiley. Now, who could that be? I don't know. I can't figure that one. So, these two men was good friends like anything. Then one night, Ijilu do a bad thing. But everybody thinks she was his friend, Rester Charlie, who do that bad thing. And they say shame at him. But Charlie, he don't say back it no was him. No, she keep his trap shut. <laughs> and that is what is a true friend. End of story. Yours truly, Luigi. Well, Riley, what do you think of that? Luigi's grammar don't get much better, does it? <laughs> no, Mr. Riley. But there are more important things even than English. I owe you an apology. Me? What for? Oh, Riley, dear, you can't bluff any more. Luigi's composition explains what you did for him. Oh, I'm proud oh, of you. Uh, cut it out, Peg. Don't, don't be kissing me if you're company. There's just one thing, Mr. Riley. Uh, why did you uh, assume the blame? Well, I guess it's okay to tell now. You see, tonight... Uh, tonight? It's happening tonight. Right now. I gotta go. I promised Luigi I'd be there with him. I don't understand, Miss Jessup. Why did we follow Riley down here to the courthouse? You see, Mrs. Riley. Well, look, Mom. Well, there's Pop with Luigi. Standing down there in front of the judge. Gosh, look at all the flags and stuff. What's going on? Oh, oh, I think I know now. Listen to the judge. Luigi Marcellucci, step forward, please. Did you witness with you? Well, yes, my aunt. My good friend, Mr. Riley. That's him. Fine. Uh, you were born in the United States, Mr. Riley? Well, uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> That's close enough. Uh, <laughs> you've known uh, Luigi at least five years? Oh, yes, sir. Luigi, twice before you have tried and failed. Yes, sir, Judge. But this time I'm a study gold. My helper, I have a friend to help her, too. I come back, Judge. Every time I come back, you say, Okay, Luigi, you read. Well, now, I must test your reading. Read this, please. Oh, read it. Please. I can no fool you, Judge. I know this about heart. Well, if you can read well enough to memorize that, I won't test you further. Let me hear it. Four score and seventy years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that the all men are created equal. That means everybody gets the same deal. The rich guys, the poor guys, the big shots, the bombs. That's fine, huh? Luigi, go ahead. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any other nation is so conceived and so dedicated have not died in vain, and that this nation, under God, shall have no birth of a freedom, and that this government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. That was very good, Luigi. I couldn't have done it better myself. The judge, this is time. I make it the grave, huh? Yes, Luigi. Hold up your right hand, and when you've taken this oath, you'll be a citizen of the United States. So that's why Riley wanted Luigi to learn English. Gosh. Pop's helping initiate another American. Gosh. Oh, my. Look. Riley's taking the oath, too. It won't hurt him. (laughs) 
it won't hurt any of us to say it again. And I really support the Constitution and the laws of the United States against, against all enemies, enemies foreign or domestic. domestic. But I will bear through faith and allegiance to the same. And I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me. Luigi Marcellucci, you are now a citizen of the United States. All right. My friend, you shake the hand of one noble in America. Oh, the pleasure is mine, Luigi. It's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> <laughs> The Rileys will be right back. Now, don't get too hungry, folks, but how does this sound for a menu? Rice and tomato soup, grilled steaks with onion gravy, mashed potatoes and buttered peas, lettuce and tomato salad, bread and butter, ice cream and cake and coffee. Sounds like a meal at a fancy restaurant, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's an actual dinner on a United States battle wagon, not at peace, but at war, in a forward combat area with men on alert all over the ship. Due to danger of attack from planes or submarines, gun crews frequently eat, sleep, and live at their battle stations, sometimes as long as five days at a stretch. Under battle station conditions, if the men can't come to good hot food, good hot food must be taken to them. So the Navy has developed a system of hot meals, including meat, to be served actually under battle station conditions. Enormous supplies of meat must be carried for this purpose. Our Navy recognizes the need for those high-quality, life-essential proteins that meat provides. And we all recognize that meat is a yardstick of protein foods. We bring you this tribute to the Navy Office of Supplies on the occasion this week of the 150th anniversary of this important branch of the service. The nutritional statements about meat made on this program are accepted by the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. Why didn't you tell me you were taking the blame for Luigi? Well, if Luigi got expelled, he might have had trouble getting to be a citizen. Oh, Riley, you don't think I would have tattled to your teacher? I don't know. <laughs> the first day I ever saw you, you tattled to the teacher on me. <laughs> what are you talking uh, about? Back in the seventh grade, the day I sat in the seat right behind you. <laughs> you had your hair done up in the prettiest pigtails. <laughs> yeah? And I tied a live frog to each pigtail. <laughs> Then what a day. <laughs> Follow The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley and presented by the American Meat Institute next week at this same time. Next week, Riley finds himself an expectant father, and the results promise to be amusing. William Bendix appears on The Life of Riley by arrangement with Hal Roach. The Life of Riley was directed by Don Bernard with music by Lou Kozloff and came to you from Hollywood. This is Ken Niles saying, see you next week. <laughs>